Hey guys, in front of me, we have the all new mock wheel basalt e-bike. Why do I have a new mock wheel e-bike? Because they wanted to send it to me and I wanted to have it. Now, that being said, they did want me to do a dedicated review video on this, but I'm not really that kind of channel. So instead I offered to build something for it. Now, utilizing one of the coolest features of this e-bike, its ability to attach an inverter to it and power other things off of it, we're gonna build a project off of that. I figured, you know, let's hook up a little linear actuator and create a little electric dump truck trailer and this thing could be used to haul around gravel or stuff like that. After it all, it does have these massive fat tires on the front and back, hydraulic brakes, a 750 watt motor. This thing is extremely fast, powerful, and capable. It's great off-road and on-road. I love this thing. That being said, let's get started with our build. So right here you can see the trailer we're going to use and the reason i have this trailer in particular is because i tried looking around kajiji i couldn't find a used one and then i started looking at the price of steel and wheels and all the things you'd need to actually make your own trailer now first of all i need a welder probably and i don't have one second of all the price of all those materials is well higher than if you just buy a base trailer like this and then modify it so our first step is going to be taking everything off this getting it right down to the base platform Ta-da! Now with everything stripped off this unit, let me go over my plan with you. You see right here this arm comes underneath the unit and right here is a hinge. This allows this to tuck away nicely so you can transport it around, break it down, it's nice and portable. Now we're going to utilize this hinge section in conjunction with the wheels. The wheels are actually going to be our tipping point. So we're going to have the unit like this on its wheels and we're going to put a linear actuator between these two points. So actually as it tips, the bottom gets lower to the ground. This will be a really efficient way to utilize the power of the undersized linear actuator. That being said, our first step is going to be going ahead and cutting up some half inch plywood here. We're going to wrap the outside using these existing mounting holes for the old fabric. We'll just have to countersink the screw heads and then we'll actually reuse the screws as well. So here's our edge piece and because of the rounded corners we're only going to go to this point and then that allows us to anchor off these posts as well. So the next thing I want to do is transfer these four holes right here up onto our plywood and then we'll drill and countersink for the screw. We'll do that on the other side and then on this back side we're just going to be attaching the board one to these screw hole locations as well as the edge of this plywood. We'll nail and glue everything together. So we've got our back piece, we've got a little notch in the corner here on both sides, that's to allow for room for these metal tabs. Then it simply drops into place here. We're actually going to use these metal tabs to attach a screw here and here. Now to attach the sides to this back piece, we're just going to clamp everything together. You see the plywood's a little bit bowed. And then we're going to add glue, brad nails, and a couple two inch screws. That'll keep everything nice and tight. So before we can cut to size and attach the back door flap, I want to attach this cross member across the back here. That'll allow us to mount the hinge for the flap, as well as keeping everything nice and rigid back here. Now I can go ahead and trace out and cut our door flaps. So next, in order to keep our flap closed in transit, we've got these little toggle latches with a stationary bit here, the latch right here. And now for the fun stuff, we get to mount this eight inch linear actuator. The thing itself is about 12 inches and it extends eight inches out, which is plenty for what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna mount this part to the pole. We're gonna through bolt it. And then this side up here, we're just gonna screw into the plywood. Maybe I'll use a bolt just to make it a little bit stronger.
The dump trailer is mechanically ready. I'm gonna slap on the wheels and we're gonna attach to the rear axle of the bike. And see if this thing works. After some heavy grinding around this area, since apparently this is a gigantic bike and does not fit regular size hardware, it fits. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm just gonna hold the battery up to the two leads and let's see how it dips. That's maximum. Seems pretty good to me. Let's go back. Nice. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the Mach Wheel Basalt e-bike has a capability of using a sold separately inverter to power auxiliary units, such as a 120 volt supply, a 12 volt supply, all that good stuff. Now that is a 12 volt linear actuator and that was the plan on how to make this whole thing operational. Unfortunately, I'm being told something about we won't ship to Canada or maybe they're just out of stock. I don't really know. Either way, I don't have the inverter as planned. So here's the contingency plan I have. We're gonna be using an old Ryobi vacuum cleaner that I cut the end off. You might remember this from my Power Wheels upgrade video. Sorry. How is it boys? Awesome! That Power Wheels kind of died and it's gone. So we get to use this again, as well as my Ryobi battery. And then here we just have a little rocker switch, a two position, two pole switch and this is going to reverse the positive and negative polarity allowing the linear actuator to spin in one direction and then the other. So I've got this base plate and these few scraps of plywood right here and here's my little toggle switch. The plan is to mount this all up, cut a hole, insert this here, do all the wiring on the back side, our battery will get mounted here and then this whole assembly will get mounted to our water bottle holder on the bike. Then we'll just run some wires back to the linear actuator. So I've got marked out the location of the water bottle holder. We're going to drill these out and then countersink the top so the screws sit flush as they're not very long. And now we're just going to paint it black to dress it up a little and make it not so obvious. So now that our trailer functions like a dump truck, time to make it look like one. We've got these fake little gusset pieces right here that I've cut on an angle. They're going to go right here and then we're going to have that long flat piece along the top that's for like protecting the driver from falling debris so it doesn't die. In this instance there's no driver but yeah it's going to help make it look like a dump truck. After we get that all mounted in place with some glue and knee nails we're going to go ahead and paint this whole thing with a nice caterpillar yellow. Please don't sue and that'll really complete the look. Hey, see I had to extend my wire a little bit here as the factory one is not that long. So I'm just going to start zip tying it along. I'm going to leave a little loop here so it can bend with the spring. And then we're going to keep tying it all the way over here up to our water bottle holder where we're going to next mount our bracket. So everything's wired up. We've got our Ryobi battery installed here. Let's we'll see how she works. Nice. All right, it's working great. Next step, 
Give it a little bit of a sanding and a fresh paint job. It's a rock dirt. <laughs> 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 